Beth Walker, and I'm the program supervisor for the Mi'kmaq Family Healing Center, a transition house for First Nations women and children who have experienced violence in their lives. According to the Native Women's Association Sisters in Spirit campaign, there are more than 600 Aboriginal women missing or murdered in Canada. Aboriginal women are three and a half times more likely to be victims of domestic violence than non-Aboriginal women. <coughs> This monologue is based on interviews by Eve Ensler with women from the Oglala Lakota Nation on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Their stories reflect the challenges that Native women face every day, living in isolation and without resources. He wanted to go out. He said to me, you stay home. I said, I wanted to go out. He said, you have a baby. <coughs> I said, it's our baby. <coughs> I laid the baby down. He probably felt my tension because he was whimpering. The baby. I looked up. And he slapped me, my husband. Not a blast that knocks your eyes blue. That came later. It was a smack, a hard domestic smack. He looked at me. <clears throat> he was smiling. I couldn't believe it. He was smiling. He slapped me again. His dad was vicious to his mother. I saw him smile. What was that? He was the nicest person. He had long black hair, combing his long hair when we made love, it got loose before. He took me to the dinner, made me go out with his boss. I didn't want to go. He kicked me under the table, told me to look happy, told me to smile. I smiled. He kicked <coughs> me again, asked me who I was trying to fuck. Asked me to stop coming on to everyone. I stopped smiling. He kicked me again. This went on and on. Outside the restaurant, he grabbed my hair and pulled me down to the curb. It had been snowing. He buried me in the snow. He pounded me in the gutter. The snow was melting. It was sloppy and mud. My hair felt like it was bleeding. He was drinking. I was too. I must have blacked out. I woke up in the hospital after five brain surgeries. My hair was gone. They shaved it off. I had to relearn to talk and move my arms. It took me four months to remember how to cook breakfast. I remember putting the egg in the frying pan with the bacon. <coughs> I knew the egg felt right. I just, <laughs> I just didn't remember to crack it open. Just the egg in the frying pan <laughs> in its shell. <laughs> My head was bald. After 18 years, he beat me. In the morning, when he was so nice again, I would braid his hair and I would take my time like I cared so much. And I would do it perfectly crooked. <laughs> I would make the hair so they'd stand up all crazy like. <clears throat> then he'd go forgetting that the bruises on my face were his handprints. He'd walk all cocky in the street, all macho in the road, but his braid would be so crooked <laughs> and look so stupid and wrong. This shouldn't have made me that happy. It, Really, you shouldn't have made me that happy. Heard he was out with a woman, making love. She was 
fluffing his hair when he was all wild on top of her. Came home much later, and his braid and his hair was braided up all right and tight. He passed out from drinking. Then I got up with the scissors as he snored and slowly walked to him and just cut the braid off, completely off, and put it in his hand so that when he woke up, he screamed, what the fuck? I'm going to kill you. And he jumped up, but I had tied his shoes together so that he couldn't run. <laughs> I didn't go back to him for three years until I knew his hair had grown out again. I didn't want to have sex with him. He was drunk. I was just a piece of meat to him, a big hole. I tried to pretend I was asleep. He elbowed me, jerked me, pulled me up. I remember thinking, just get it over with. He was soft and kept pumping and pumping until I got sore. He said, it didn't feel good. He said, who were you with? Was he bigger than me? Did you like it? You're like a mouse at the line. You have to move fast to the door. He picked me up like I was red. His eyes were numb. I could hear my son screaming, his mouth open, and his tonsils. I could see his tonsils. My husband beat the shit out of me. He wrapped my long black hair around his hand, jerked my head. I tried to get my son. That's not your son, he said, holding my hair in his hand. That's not your son anymore. Now he calls me in the middle of the night, weeping. He didn't mean to beat his wife. He didn't mean to batter her. He's suicidal. He knows what his mother went through. But he can't stop. My son. They took our land. They took our ways. They took our men. We want them back. Wow.